This week we're going to be reading the book of Acts, which is short for the Acts of the Apostles. And this book basically just covers the first 30 years of the early Christian church. Um, this book has been a favorite of mine in the New Testament for quite some time. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy reading it because it covers um, just a whole lot of stuff happening in these 30 years. It begins with uh, the coming down of the Holy Spirit and then details how um, this message of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection uh, going out into all of the known world at that time. So, super fun read. In this video, we're going to look at some background information that should be helpful for you as you begin reading. Uh, first, the author is Luke, which is the same Luke as Luke's Gospel. Um, we know this, uh, one, one way that we know this is that Luke actually writes in Acts in my former book. So he, uh, he connects himself with uh, his gospel and with this book. Uh, it was written before Paul's execution, so probably early 60s. And then it was known and used by Justin Martyr and Irenaeus. And these are two, uh, these are two early church fathers. And so they saw the validity uh, and the accuracy in the book of Acts. And so it was known and used by them as, uh, they, uh, as they wrote various things and as they taught and ministered. Okay, so characteristics of the book of Acts. First, the book is filled with quite a few speeches, and these speeches are made by some of the main characters, often apostles, disciples, um, that are just spreading the news of Jesus and his life and ministry. Um, there's a lot of elegant language, so there are 400 words that are not used elsewhere in the New Testament. And that goes back to, if you remember in last week's uh, uh, video on the Gospel of Luke, you know that Luke was a very skilled writer. And so uh, that is, you know, he, he continues that in this book as well. So this is a historical narrative and it is descriptive and not prescriptive. And this is important to understand. So the book of Acts is telling us about the history of the early church. It is not giving us these guidelines to, uh, to follow uh, if you are a church or a believer of today. This is history. This is not something that one should read and say, okay, I need to do things exactly like this. And then finally, this provides the backdrop for Paul's epistles. So uh, as you read, uh, think as you read Acts, and then later as you read the various letters of Paul, that all of the time that Paul is writing his letters is kind of captured in this book of Acts. So it is telling the history that we then get bits and pieces of as we see uh, Paul writing his letters to various places, uh, various churches that he had already been at. And uh, as you can see in the background on all of these slides, this details all the places that Paul was going on his missionary journeys. And so this, uh, the book of Acts, captures all of that traveling in the missionary journeys, but then also provides the backdrop for Paul's letters to some of these various churches. The organization of Acts is pretty cool. So the key verse is found in uh, chapter 1, verse 8, and it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so, basically, when you are reading through Acts and you're thinking about its structure, think of uh, a set of circles. And uh, in the very center, you have um, Jerusalem to Judea. And then you have a little bit bigger, Judea and Samaria. And then you have to the ends of the earth. And so, basically, this book is just showing that spread of going out and out, that geographical spread of the message of Jesus. 
So there are six kind of panels, you could say, um, that are found here. And these would be, uh, the apostles are first in Jerusalem, and then we see this expansion into Judea and Samaria, and then a little bit further out, the expansion to the Gentiles, which includes the conversion of Paul. And then you have, from then on out, Paul's journeys as he continues to spread the message. So then it goes um, expansion into Asia and Europe and Rome. So a lot of big events happen in Acts. Um, Pentecost, which is the event where the Holy Spirit comes down to uh, abide in the believers. Um, that happens early on and kind of fuels this outward spread. And then there's a lot of persecution, um, ongoing persecution for those who are uh, spreading the message of Jesus as they, um, as they travel about. And then uh, the book of Acts also details uh, the journeys and missions of Peter, Paul, and James. Um, it details the Jerusalem Council, which will be um, something very important for you to uh, pay attention to. And then finally, it details the, uh, the various journeys that they went on spreading their message. Okay, and then finally, the purpose of Acts. So the purpose was to show that the rapidly spreading movement of Christianity is, in fact, the work of God. So it... it this is how it ties into the Gospels. In the Gospels, we're seeing who was this Jesus that uh, that everyone is talking about. And then Acts is kind of the second part of this. That, um, that So Jesus has come, died, rose again, ascended, and now what? And Acts captures that now what? Um, Acts captures the spreading of the church. And so, basically, Acts is showing that despite Jesus dying and being crucified, he actually is the Jewish Messiah that he said he was, and he is now ascended to be at the right hand of God. And then the next one is that salvation to Gentiles was God's plan all along. So, though we have the Old Testament that is focused on God's covenant relationship with the Israelites, um, the, the, uh, the push of the book of Acts is that the Gentiles are now part of this story, and this has been part of God's plan all along. And then finally, that the Apostle Paul is not just some renegade Jew, but he is actually God's chosen apostle for the Gentiles. So he has this very dramatic conversion to Christianity where he comes to believe in Jesus, and then he goes on to be the greatest apostle to the Gentile people. So, there's a flyby of the book of Acts. I hope you enjoy it.